From the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, WYLN Evening Edition at 5.30 starts right now. Good evening. It's Thursday, July 14th, 2016. I'm Ann Gownley. A former Hazel Township solicitor pled guilty on Thursday to charges against stealing over $105,000 in funds he held in an escrow account. According to U.S. Attorney's Office, 64-year-old Charles R. Pedry of Hazelton pled guilty to a single charge of theft from a program that received federal funds. Prosecutors say that Hazel Spindle and the township entered into an agreement in 2013 in which the Massachusetts-based developer paid the township funds that were to be held as security improvements at the Humboldt Industrial Park. Pedry alleged signed off on the agreement as an escrow agent and deposited over $105,000 into his law office account. He then began to write checks to himself drawn from the funds until they were depleted. According to court documents, Pedri repaid the funds but was terminated by the township and his law license was suspended last year. Pedri will face a maximum of 10 years in prison, the term of supervised release following imprisonment, and a $250,000 fine. A sentencing date has yet to be scheduled. Since May, Hazelton has been a part of the reality TV show Cops. But after today, the show will be leaving the area. WYLN's Abby Piskel has more. The reality TV show Cops has been sweeping the Hazelton area and causing quite a bit of controversy to natives who had differing opinions on the show. However, Mayor Jeff Cassatt was pleased with his decision to have the crew come to the city and film. They're going to see our, our force working hard being very professional and proficient of what, and what needs to be done on a daily basis. Uh, our force handles many calls all year long, and this is a chance for them to see what the officers go through, you know, like a virtual ride-along. A concern many residents had was the reporting of false crime just to get on TV. However, no reports of that have happened. We actually received zero phone calls of crimes or f phone calls of fake crimes that came in for people trying to get on the show. So that didn't pan out. Nobody called. There was no incidents of an incident that we showed up to that was not warranted for an official 911 call. At this time, an official air date has not been released as the producers and the mayor need to review all of the footage. Viewers can expect to see the Hazleton Police Department in action, showing all of their hard work to keep the city safe. I'll talk to the film crew today before they depart. And then they'll take their footage back to the producers. And I'm assuming in the next few weeks, I'll receive footage from the producers for my approval and, if possible, an air date. Mayor Cassatt thinks the project was successful and says that the officers were happy and motivated to work. The filming also gives the nation the opportunity to see what the Hazleton Police Force does. Hazleton law enforcement will continue to seek out anyone who is involved in illegal drugs or crime, whether there are cameras around or not. What are you going to do if the Hazelton police come for you? In Hazelton, for WYLN News, I'm Abby Piskel. Thank you, Abby. A West Penn Township employee died Wednesday afternoon after a lawnmower accident. 54-year-old Tina Hops of New Ringgold died when the lawnmower she was riding flipped over and fell into a creek. The incident happened just before 1 p.m. near the Township Community Park on Zines Stone Church Road in West Penn Township. The exact cause of death is not known at this time. A virtual autopsy was scheduled for Wednesday evening. Hops was a longtime Township employee. Hazleton City wants a two over $900,000 to buy a new rescue engine for the fire department and for dump trucks for the streets department. It would be paid over a number of years with a mix of federal community development block grant funds and state liquid fuels money. CDBG funds will cover the cost of the new rescue engine, which would have all of the capabilities of it will be housed at the Southside Fire Station and will replace a 1991 KME pumper. City officials are looking for a five-year lease purchase plan. The city will use part of its annual state liquid fuels tax allocation to cover the costs of the dump trucks. The owner of the region's largest auto parts scrapyard, who has also proposed an auto, has filed a defamation lawsuit against a local attorney who has led the charge against the shredder. Joseph Kress and his wife Tracy have filed the suit against attorney Frank Skakowski, who lives next door to the proposed shredder site and has been a vehement opponent. Kress has proposed the shredder for the Green Ridge section of Hazel Township, just across the border line from West Hazelton. 
The Crest suit alleges Kokoski has tried to block the project, including the formation of a group called Citizens Against the Shredder, a.k.a. CATS, has tried to disrupt Crest's business and has made false and defamatory statements about Crest's and its businesses. The suit seeks its excess of $50,000 and damages plus legal and delay costs. Skakowski was successful in getting a preliminary injunction to halt construction for the shredder. He also has land development and zoning appeals pending in county court. A former Coughlin administrator convicted of having sex with an underage student has filed suit against the Wilkes-Barre Area School District, claiming he was wrongfully terminated. Stephen Stahl's suit also names the Wilkes-Barre Area Education Association. The teachers' union, Stahl, is seeking $135,000 in damages plus punitive compensation. The school board fired Stahl in January of 2015. He'd been convicted of corruption of minors for having a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old girl in 2004. She came forward after a decade. Stahl claims he was never given a hearing to respond to the charges and he says two district employees took personal items including a leather jacket and an antique motorboat and sold them at an auction. Stahl was sentenced to six to 23 months and paroled in October. There is a state budget deal the General Assembly adopted, a revenue package, and Governor Wolf signed it into law last night. There is no broad-based tax increase, but there are a host of tax increases and new fees. Among them, it makes digital downloads subject to the state's 6% sales tax. The legislator is considering several options, among them online gambling through casinos and gambling at airport terminals. The deal passed the House by a 116-75 to 75 vote. It passed the Senate 28 to 22. The polls are all over the place. A Quinniac poll puts Donald Trump ahead of Hillary Clinton in Pennsylvania. It's Trump 43, Clinton 41 when head to head. When you add in third party candidates, it's Trump 40, Clinton 34, Libertarian Gary Johnson 9, and Green Jill Stein 3. But an NBC Martis poll has Clinton up by 9 in Pennsylvania, 45 to 36. When you add in the third parties, it's Clinton 43%, Trump 35%, Johnson 8%, and Stein 2%. Even the polling on the Senate race is vastly different. Quinniac has incumbent Pat Toomey well in front, leading by 10. 10,490 to 39, but NBC at Morris has challenger Katie McGinty in front 47 to 44. The Quinniac poll was done with 982 registered voters in PA alone over a 13-day period. The NBC Martis poll was done with 822 registered voters nationwide over a six-day period. Drug, overdose, drug overdoses in Pennsylvania have skyrocketed. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration says they jumped an eye-popping 23% from 2015 to 2016. It says there were 2,742 in 2014. That increased to 3,383 last year. Nearly 55% of the state's overdose victims were found to have heroin in their system. Fentanyl also emerged as a prominent opioid used by those killed by overdoses. Well, Fun Fest is coming up this September, and downtown Hazleton is getting ready for the big weekend. Every year, Fun Fest has creative banners that hang in the downtown. The banners are up on the posts from Diamond Avenue to Cedar Street, right down Broad Street. This year, Fun Fest is Saturday, September 10th and 11th. The event's major sponsor is Mohegan Sun, which is on several banners. Public Relations Coordinator of Fun Fest, Julie Ferry, is excited about this year's new colored banners. Four exciting new Fun Fest banner designs. This year we've gone to full color designs, which is something we've never had before, so we're very excited about that. The, the four different banner designs represent what Fun Fest is all about. We featured a balloon from our parade, and who doesn't love the Fun Fest parade? It's one of the big hallmarks of our event. We've also featured the car show, which is a big attraction for our event. We featured some music, which is an, again another huge feature of the Fun Fest event itself, and we featured another photo of what our Fun Fest event is really about um, and what founded Fun Fest to begin with, which is our nonprofit organizations. Um, and that's really what Fun Fest was about to begin with. And, and what we try to focus on every year is a chance for our Fun Fest um, nonprofit organizations to come downtown, be a big part of the community, and to help raise funds. Again, Fun Fest in downtown Hazleton is September 10th and 11th. For more information, you can visit funfestpa.org.
Time now for a first look at our forecast. Heavy rain and wind plagued most of our viewing area early this afternoon. Then the sun made an appearance again. But can we expect any more rain like this in the next few days? Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachik is in the Weather Center with those details. Joe? That's right, Ann. We did have the showers and thunderstorms that uh, moved through, a lot of them producing some strong gusty winds, a lot of rain in a short amount of time period, dangerous cloud to ground, lightning. Now, are we done with all of those storms? Will we see any more this week? I'm going to let you know in a little bit, but one thing for certain, we're still going to be dealing with temperatures in the 80s. I'll talk about the complete seven-day forecast, including this weekend, in just a few, Ann. Thanks, Joe. Coming up next, we'll hear from Hazleton Area Superintendent of Schools on yesterday's scheduled meeting that didn't happen. Plus, WYLN's Aaron Harvey has more from Dr. Butler on the four-day school week proposal. In sports, Mike Gilbert has highlights from the minor leagues. More news, weather, and sports is coming your way only on WYLN. Stay tuned. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, video journalists Mike Lula and Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Gary Perna, Abby Piskel, and Aaron Harvey. Sports with Eric DiBerardinis and John Eric Poli, and weather with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic. Satisfied with your child's education this school year? Well, take a look at what Marion Catholic High School has to offer. Students are challenged academically, spiritually, morally, and physically. Excellent student-teacher ratio and a full array of clubs and activities. 90% of all grads continue on to higher education. A sound investment in your child's future. Affordable tuition and scholarships are available. Log on to our website or call today for a free tour. Visit the Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau website at tournapa.com for the listings of the many events you will find in Luzerne County. From wine festivals, hill climbs, tomato and kielbasa festivals, you will find it all in Luzerne County. Luzerne County was named the best outdoors destination in Pennsylvania by the official Best in PA website. The Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau will help you relax, relive history, and marvel at the area's stunning natural beauty. Luzerne County, you'll find it right here in Northeast PA. Beach Mountain Lakes Restaurant and Lounge is open to the public Wednesday through Sunday. They offer great food and entertainment with a beautiful lake view from their 100-foot deck. Wednesday is Crab Lake Night, Thursday is their Burger Bash, and Sunday is Clam Night. Check out their live entertainment every weekend. Stop by Thomas Farm, 556 St. John's Road in Drums for flowers and vegetable plants, hanging baskets, and in-season fresh vegetables. Open seven days a week, 9 to 6. Stop by and visit them every Thursday night in the Freeland Park. The Hazleton Area School Board called a special meeting yesterday, but not enough board members showed up to actually have the meeting. WYLN's Aaron Harvey has more. The Hazleton Area School Board scheduled a special meeting yesterday at 1 o'clock, but it was canceled because they did not have enough board members in attendance to hold a meeting. The board would have needed five members to hold the meeting, but only four were in attendance. There was no agenda at the meeting, and the topic seemed to be a mystery to the majority of the public in attendance. Superintendent of the Hazleton Area School District, Dr. Craig Butler, says the subject of the meeting was to discuss personnel changes. Some of our principals and vice principals have changed seats and we're excited about those moves and uh, I think the, the individuals are looking forward to new challenges. Um, we're also going to be engaging in filling a counselor position at Maple Manor as we had our counselor that was there vacated that position for another position. So uh, we're excited about some candidates coming uh, from within the district to seek that position. Uh, we had a, quite a lengthy list of interviews today for department chairman. So our department chairman had subject area uh, departments throughout the district K through 12 and we had a string of interviews today and some exciting candidates. So. We're looking forward to presenting that to the board and at the July meeting as well. One item that will be on the board's agenda in the future is open elementary positions. We have some specialists opening at the middle school elementary level, music, art, and phys ed in particular. Mr. Donati will be leading the charge to fill those vacancies. And again, uh, we're excited because we have some qualified uh, applicants in our opinion coming forward expressing interest in the Hazleton Area School District 
And it's, it's exciting to see new folks come in, of course, pending board approval, and the strength and the skill set they bring to the district, which will enhance our faculty and staff. The board recently voted to have four-day school weeks. Dr. Butler is waiting to hear back from the state. With regard to the four-day seasonal week schedule, December, January, and February, I submitted a, a letter of request to the state about a week and a half ago. And we're waiting for a response from the state. Our initial contact with the state was, was um, at least verbally favorable. So we're anticipating their support. The next regularly scheduled board meeting is Thursday, July 28th. In Hazel Township, for WILN News, I'm Erin Harvey. Thank you, Erin. Coming up next, Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic is back with a full look at our forecast. Plus, a look at a special bazaar this weekend to benefit a local fire department in Carbon County. All that and more, including sports, is coming up here on WYLN News. Stay tuned. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and Train Comfort Specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. On the next episode of Warrior Summit Outdoors, we visit Bill Allen's Pocono Institute of Taxidermy and meet up with several combat veterans going through the school. Since the Vietnam era, Bill has been teaching veterans the art of taxidermy in order to heal the emotional scars of war and prepare veterans for a career in the field of taxidermy. On the next episode of Warrior Summit Outdoors. So we continue with the heat and humidity today across our area, walking outside very humid. Even last night, it was very humid with very warm temperatures for overnight lows. And then we got the showers and thunderstorms that uh, moved through, some of them uh, very gusty and some locally heavy downpours, like I said earlier. And when they pass, brings back the humidity. And right now outside, boy, it's beautiful. I can actually see the moon. I can see plenty of just about clear skies, a few of those high a thin cirrus clouds up there but that pretty much is about it but it continues to get warmer now as the rain has passed at least right here and the humidity is once again starting to creep up now there's still a chance of some more showers and thunderstorms in the seven day forecast which we're going to get to in a little bit but first on to the conditions hanging out in the 80s those dew point numbers again when they start creeping up into the 60s that's when you start feeling the humidity outside. And once it gets to about 70, that's when it becomes tropical-like oppressive, just downright awful <laughs> when you walk outside. It almost feels like you're in a sauna. And we've been having some of those higher dew point numbers, and you feel it as soon as you walk outside. Notice the uh, rainfall that we had from some of the storms that came through, a little bit over a half of an inch of rain. Temperature-wise today, how we fared out, 84. Boy, it was a muggy start to our morning. 69 degrees was the low and as those storms moved through those higher wind gusts we came up with about a 30 mile per hour wind gust at almost half past one in the afternoon throughout the commonwealth of uh, pennsylvania again uh, for the most part sunshine mixed with a few clouds 88 works Grant international airport uh, 92 in williamsport 91 seals grove 89 state college 87 and pity it is Pittsburgh. It's a great place to be, but you know what? It's Pittsburgh. All right, get on to the wind speeds. Thank you. All right, <laughs> 5, 10, 15 miles per hour. Those are the sustained winds with some of those wind gusts. And expert, and seven-day forecast looking like this. Here's what we can expect over the next couple of days. 
Well, we got a mix of sun and clouds for the next several days, actually. 82 for tomorrow, 83 for Saturday. Weekend looking great. Mostly sunny for Sunday, 83 degrees. And then as we go into next week, a chance of a shower, thunderstorm here and there for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And right across the board, for the most part, temperatures getting up into the 80s with some of those overnight lows getting down into the 60s. Stick around. We'll have a lot more for you coming up after these commercial messages. Were you satisfied with your child's education this school year? Well, take a look at what Marion Catholic High School has to offer. Students are challenged academically, spiritually, morally, and physically. Excellent student-teacher ratio and a full array of clubs and activities. 90% of all grads continue on to higher education. A sound investment in your child's future. Affordable tuition and scholarships are available. Log on to our website or call today for a free tour. Go hog wild for Iron Pigs Baseball. WYLN is televising the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs live. America's favorite pastime on your local network, WYLN TV 35. See the stars of tomorrow at Coca-Cola Park. Don't miss any of the games here on WYLN TV 35. Visit WYLNTV.com for a complete Iron Pig schedule. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs on WYLN, your home for live sports. A local fire company is inviting the public out to its annual bazaar that helps raise money for the fire company. WYLN's Aaron Harvey has more. The Lehigh Inn Luzanne Township Fire Company will be holding their annual bazaar this weekend. The bazaar will start on Friday at 5 and run until 11 and Saturday from 4 to 11. The company holds this fundraiser every year in order to stay open. Fire Chief of Lehigh and Luzanne Township Fire Company, Tim Rossman, says the bazaar has been going on for several years. This has been going on since the early 50s. Um, we call it our homecoming, and it was to help welcome home the troops when they came back from war um, at that particular point in time when it first got started. Uh, it's been going on for generations and generations, and we're here to try to continue that. The fire company has to raise their own funds in order to keep the community safe. It helps us with our daily, uh, everyday operational expenses. Uh, we are completely, pretty much uh, solely supporting ourselves. We don't have money coming in like uh, some of the other fire companies do from their municipalities. We pretty much take care of ourselves. We do get donation from our municipality and we're very grateful for that, but um, it's, it's small compared to what it costs for us to operate. One of the easiest ways you can support the company is by purchasing food at the bazaar. We're going to have all sorts of food. We're going to have all your typical fair food, homemade fresh cut french fries, barbecues, different types of barbecues actually, um, corn on the cob, uh, pizza, yeah, our, our special homemade pizzas, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, uh, halupki. So, yeah, we're, uh, we've got quite a variety of food. Vice President and Deputy Fire Chief of the Lehigh and Luzanne Township Fire Company, Keith Cook says there will be lots of entertainment, including a fireworks display. Friday night we have a live band here, and Saturday we have a live band here, and also, Saturday night we have our Festival of Prizes ticket, which has 61 prizes on it, and they're $2 a piece, and we got donations from a variety of businesses in the area, and that's how we run the ticket, and uh, also we're having a fireworks display at dusk on Saturday night. Again, the bazaar will be held this Friday and Saturday from 5 to 11 on Friday and 4 to 11 on Saturday at the fire company in Lehigh Township. For WILN News, I'm Aaron Harvey. Thank you, Aaron. Coming up next, Mike Gilbert is in for Eric Tiberdinas with sports here on WILN. Plus, Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacek will have one final look at our forecast. Stay tuned. Visit the Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau website at tournapa.com for the listings of the many events you will find in Luzerne County. From wine festivals, hill climbs, tomato and kielbasa festivals, you will find it all in Luzerne County. Luzerne County was named the best outdoors destination in Pennsylvania by the official Best in PA website. The Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau will help you relax, relive history, and marvel at the area's stunning natural beauty. Luzerne County, you'll find it right here in Northeast PA.
Beach Mountain Lakes Restaurant and Lounge is open to the public Wednesday through Sunday. They offer great food and entertainment with a beautiful lake view from their 100-foot deck. Wednesday is Crab Lake Night, Thursday is their Burger Bash, and Sunday is Clam Night. Check out their live entertainment every weekend. Triple-A All-Star Game took place last night, and the Iron Pigs were well represented. Let's go to the fourth inning. Andrew Knapp, opposite field deep. He has seven home runs for Lehigh Valley this season, and there's an All-Star Game homer that breaks a scoreless tie. Next inning, Cam Perkins making Bacon USA proud. He grounds out, but the run will score. 2-0 International League. Perkins gets some high fives in the dugout for that. International League wins it 4-2. The day after closing out the AAA All-Star Game, Edward Mujica began a job search. The veteran reliever has asked for and been granted a release from the Phillies organization. Reports surfacing that Mujica has signed with the Royals. Mujica had a 3.69 ERA in 39 innings pitched for Lehigh Valley this season. And a new ESPN 30 for 30 film comes out tonight on two of baseball's most complicated stars. Dwight Doc Gooden and Darryl Strawberry helped the Mets win the 1986 World Series, but they did have a lot of off-the-field issues during their time in baseball. Doc Gooden recently at PNC Field as part of the Yankees Legend Series. The former Yankee chatted with fans and also talked about the upcoming documentary. We have a lot of love-hate relationships, basically. And, um, we, on, the, on the show, we talk about it. We trade stuff out. It's great, but to me, that's the best part of it. You know, everybody's human. Stuff happens, but if you have a problem, no matter what it is, have someone you can talk to. Doc and Darrell can be seen at 9 o'clock tonight on ESPN. Great weather for the first round of the British Open in Scotland, and the players took full advantage, especially Phil Mickelson. Lefty's bid for the lowest score ever in a major came up just short as the birdie putt to card a 62 lipped out on 18. Phil finished round one at eight under par with Patrick Reed and Martin Keimer in a tie for second at five under. Spieth and Dustin Johnson both even par. Coming up next, Joe Garbacic with a final look at the forecast. Stop by Thomas Farm, 556 St. John's Road in Drums for flowers and vegetable plants, hanging baskets, and in-season fresh vegetables. Open seven days a week, 9 to 6. Stop by and visit them every Thursday night in the Freeland Park. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. Well, it doesn't look too bad for the seven-day extended forecast going into tomorrow, which is Friday. I think we'll see a mix of uh, clouds and sunshine. You know, we still won't rule out the threat of a shower or storm. Just about any one of these days. Uh, but for the most part, it'll be rain-free. Weekend looking pretty good. Mix of clouds and sun, mostly sunny in the 80s. And as we start going into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, we'll continue to be in the 80s. But there's going to be that chance of a, a shower, a thunderstorm, or two around. I'm not really expecting any kind of washouts, but notice those overnight lows generally dropping down. Well, we got the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s, so it'll be very warm next couple of days. But some of those overnight lows, you got 50s and 60s, not bad. But you know, you got to keep that AC on or the windows cranked up. Cranked up or open or you know. The AC's up and the windows yeah, it open. It depends on what kind of windows you have. You do have those crank ones. You know what they are. You've got the ones that you lift up. Okay. And it's all right. But listen, you know, it was really nice last night, but 
this yeah. morning's rain was actually going sideways. <laughs> I noticed yeah. that looking out the and window. And the today. wind and all that, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was hesitant on sending Mike out earlier today. It was a little, a little <laughs> rough out there, but uh, at least there was no outdoor sports. Yeah, thank God. During that storm, and uh, we'll see what else uh, those rail riders and iron pigs have for us coming up the rest of their season. They play tonight. All right, sounds good. Have a good night, everyone.